Oh my god, did she go? <laughs> How precious. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Hi, can anybody hear me? Is it working? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. How's it yeah, going, everybody? That's all I needed to know. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi. All right. Uh, first thing is go ahead and just, you know, mute everybody's mics because it's going to get kind of crazy. And we'll get to this. I was going to say, too, that ding that keeps going off, I think only you can turn it off, too, if, like, that's annoying to anybody. Oh, uh, where I is think that? I don't know. In my last Zoom, someone only like someone said only the professor can turn it off. So I'm not sure. Like I think it might be the in like the. Is, is when new people join the Zoom um, application. It's right. the participants. Each new participant will create the dating zone. I don't know how to turn it off either because I'm not a teacher, but you might. Wow! I actually do not. Where am I? There we go. I actually do not know how to do that, but that's a good thing for me to learn how to do. <laughs> It's probably just going to be, since we have 233 people, it's probably just going to be dinging constantly, isn't it? Yes. Hmm. All right. That means we can't hear your lecture. What'd you say? I said that might mean you miss something in your lecture that's important. Oh, if I turn down the sound or from the dinging? No, if, you, if we, the dinging's going off while you're lecturing, it might interfere. Yeah, let me see. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba um, all right. Everybody sees my face really huge on my computer this morning. Oh my gosh. Hmm. And that's on my end. So I wonder if I turn down my volume, I probably can't hear anybody. So it's got to be within the program, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking too. All right. Well, it might be a little harsh right now if that happens, but I'll have to probably get into the back end. I don't know. Like I said, I'll probably wait to do that. How many people do we have in here today? 158. Holy cow, everybody. What's up? Uh, go ahead and mute your microphones. And uh, today we're probably going to hear some dings. Um, unless somebody knows how to go into the back end. No, you found a tutorial. Participants are those dots. You can click turn off the doorbell. If you look at the side where the participants are, uh, there are little dots and you can click and turn off the doorbell entrance sound. I'd have to mute everybody though, wouldn't I? Hmm. Mute all. Just going to take a second. Nope, that didn't help. Hmm. Oh yeah, there we go. I think I found it. All right. Is everybody muted? Can you unmute yourself? Everybody try and unmute yourself. Oh, okay, good. Okay, all right. I do not hear the doorbell sound anymore. Check it out, everybody. Awesome. What's up? All right. <laughs> No, as a lot of you. Right now, I've got a 15-year-old in the basement. That's usually where he hides. And <laughs> he's doing meetings for Rocky. And I've got a 12-year-old upstairs who's doing meetings too, but this seems to be working right now. So I'm just going to start off. Um, and then I appreciate you being muted. And if you have questions, we'll get to it. And I've got the chat thing open. So, you know, there's so many people, but you know, if, if you do have questions, I'll eventually try and scroll, but just try and like hold on to the questions for a second. Um, good morning, I'm Jason. Uh, a lot of people have already watched the first video, sort of the intro video out by my pond. So I really do appreciate you checking that out. Um, if you wanna subscribe to the YouTube channel, the reason I've got it there is because it might give you an extra set of notifications um, and also because my 12 year old has plans to just be a YouTube streaming person, make money the rest of his life. 
and told me that I could probably do that too with my students, but that's not working out so good for me, maybe him. Um, anyway, if you wanna subscribe, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. I've got links, and this is the weird part, to every single one of my lectures that I recorded this summer, just like in advance. So it's not as topical as I would like it to be. So that's why I wanna have a meeting every week so we can talk about stuff. Cause basically this class, any social class is like the class that talks about everything your parents tell you during the holidays when your relatives are coming over not to talk about, right? We're gonna talk about the war on drugs. We're gonna talk about marriage and relationships. We're gonna talk about racism, you, you name it, everything, all that. That's what we're gonna talk about all semester long. So, um, you know, be prepared. Um, and just more importantly, I'm, I'm excited for everybody to have an open mind, but I'm not used to not doing it in real time. It's kind of like everybody else. That being said, we'll get to that. So I want you to know that I went to elaborate, elaborate um, measures to make sure that each one of the lectures looked differently. I even would give a lecture for 20 minutes, go in the other room and change my shirt <laughs> and come back with something new so that the next time you watch that lecture, it feels fresh. I don't know. Anyway, this is pretty much new for everybody, but I have a feeling it's going to be a lot better in the spring um, because everybody was just like really basically trying to adapt to what was going on. So we've got 185 people here. We have 233 in the class and yet I'm telling you, I want this to be personal. I want this to be a ton of fun. And uh, I know I can make that happen because that's my thing. That's why they have me teach some of the big classes because I bring a lot of energy and because I'm just really excited about sociology. So I'm gonna do this this semester. We're gonna have a good time. And I hope that this is covering things that are meaningful and important to you every single day of your life. All right, so. I'm just going to grab some things off my workstation here. This would be a probe droid from Empire Strikes Back. That's right. Yeah, hold on. Here's a Batman figure. Wait, wait. Got a giant job of the hut. Okay, right. What is this guy doing? Look, I love old school toys. I love vintage toys. My mom, see, I was that first time around with Star Wars and G.I. Joe and everything. My mom made me keep all that stuff. And so I just, I love that stuff. My boys and I were uh, bummed not to be able to go to Comic-Con down in Denver this year um, where we've met Stan Lee before and all sorts of really, really cool people. Um, anyway, so I have two boys. I have a four acre farm and we have a giant organic garden and I have an organic garden for a lot of reasons and not only because that food is safer to me and more available, more nutrient filled, but because it's better for the biodiversity on the farm if I'm not just sinking a bunch of pesticides into it. So we had uh, 60 baby chickens that were about two months old um, and about 40 or 50 other chickens. And then for the first time in two years, my son Storm forgot to close the barn. And two nights ago, a coyote came and killed 45 of the babies. Now I get to see like 50 people's faces at once go like, ah. Oh. Um, when you live on a farm, it's like, it's like the mistakes are magnified, life and death. So we grow our own food out here. We sell our own organic eggs. Um, and this morning, so the, just this morning, I was out doing my stuff before class, and the coyote is down on the bridge. And my dog saw him and took off and chased him off the property. But they usually don't come, you know, during the daytime this far onto the property. So he found, uh, or they found 45 delicious chickens, and now they're coming back. So I'm kind of like looking outside the window right now just to make sure that everything's cool today. And I guess it's one advantage of, you know, having to be home. Anyway, all right, let me jump in with the class business. And I'm just going to kind of try and go through it as easily as I can. Can everybody hear me all right? Just shake your head because I've got like a whole group of people. Okay, cool. Um, I have a big voice. So when I'm in a classroom, uh, I, don't, I don't use a microphone. I sing in a band. I've been singing in a band uh, in this town for 20 years. The band's been together for 15 and then um, I've been playing since I was 14. My dad who played in a band for 50 years used to chaperone us into places when I was 15 years old so that we could actually play when we were underage. Um, anyway, um, I love music. Let's get to this class. I I'll tell you more about myself later. All right, so you have to have the textbook. It's required. Um, uh, what type of music? Rock and roll. 
rock and roll. Um, and, um, and the book is required because I think it's a good textbook. Now, that being said, I work with the publisher. I've known this publisher for a long time. She's really fantastic rep. So you can find this book used. You can find it at the bookstore. You can find like an online edition. You can find a real edition and an online supplement and then sell your real edition. Look, however it works for you. I don't require a brand new book all the time because that really just costs, uh, you know, I mean, they change a few things and then another edition. And I want my students to be able to eat. That's really important because I was eating a lot of ramen and mac and cheese in college and I want people to be able to have it, but it not to cost you too much money. So go out there and you can find the textbook. It is required because for a lot of the writings that you're going to be doing, the small essays and things like that, and as well as the tests, um, it's just centrally important that you have in-text citations. We're going to work on our citations. You're going to have formal scholarly citations. And I want most of those to come from the book. Sure, you can find social information all over the internet, but you can find a lot of other stuff on the internet. And not everything that you're going to find is going to be worthwhile scholarly or reputable in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, all right, let me, I'm going to flip. There's eight pages of people. I'm going to look at page two's faces. Um, there you go. Awesome. What's up? Hey, peace to you. That's right, box number whatever. <laughs> anyway, all right, so let's get back to it. Um, as far as the textbook, you're required to have the textbook. That's important. Get that textbook. Um, and the way that I work this class is really a timeline, okay? It, it's like the past is there and the now-ish is here. Now, now-ish, now-ish. And it's now-ish because now is gone, right? And then the future. And we know what happens and we know what people say. And that is, if you don't pay attention to the past, we're not going to know what's going on right now. And so likely we won't learn from that for the future. Okay. So really what I want us to do is pay attention with sociology to where we are. If we look at things like um, racism and we look at the economy, when the economy takes a downturn historically, time and time and time again, we see instances of racism rise. Suddenly it's not a problem, and then suddenly it's a problem, and those people took our jobs. Well, if we pay attention, this isn't anything new, right? It's part of historical patterns that we have to pay attention to. So I want us to keep like a timeline in mind all semester long. I also want us to have a reciprocal relationship, okay? This is not teacherville. Right? And that's not studentopolis or whatever. When I'm in a classroom, it's like sometimes people don't want to come down and talk to the professor and it seems too academic and whatever that is. I don't want there to be any barriers. So email me, reach out to me, ask questions, and engage this semester because that's how we're going to learn. And somebody's got a tiny dog or a cat or something. There you go. You'll get to see my pets throughout the course of the semester as well as my children because they'll probably pass by in the background. Let's cross our fingers. They're wearing clothes. I don't know. It's not usually what they do around the house from time to time. Okay, so um, there's all sorts of things. There's a few discussions that we're going to have online. I've got the rules for the discussions laid out. Um, we have four exams. The exams are multiple choice, um, and they're going to be 50 questions, two points apiece. So they'll cover the different chapters. And I've already laid out, um, not only in the syllabus, but in announcements. So check announcements for absolutely everything. Um, uh, because that's where I'm going to post stuff first. So uh, check announcements. The test dates will not move. I know that there's a lot of ways that I want to be flexible. And if I ever change an assignment to you, I am not going to change it and push it forward. I may push it back. But for as flexible as I am as a human being, there's a lot of people that want to be able to rely on dates and know that that's when that's taking place. So, you know, you'll be able to rely on those dates for those exams, multiple choice. But we're going to be doing writing on the discussion board. There's going to be content assignments where you're going to be writing small essays. And there's a big paper that we'll have that I'll take a whole Zoom meeting to explain called the Food Matters paper. Um, and that is really, really important. Um, and I pick a food paper really because a couple of reasons. One, we all eat to survive. And so it's not something where people are like, this is a political topic or this or that or the other. It's just something we need to eat to survive. So we're going to examine that. And usually 
Right now, some of us have a really strong relationship with our food. And some people, if I asked, what is your relationship with your food? You would look at me like, I'm sorry, what? Now, my relationship with my food is Taco Bell at 2 a.m. or whatever I can get my hands on, or right? And some people are like, I have celiac disease. I can only eat certain right types of food and I need to know what's in it, whatever that might be. So we're gonna have a big food project. The tests are worth uh, 100 points each. The paper is worth 150 points each, smaller essays and discussions. That's all laid out really. So, all right. Um, let me explain this. Uh, you can find the book. I guess I'm looking at some of these things at the bookstore. There's online versions. Um, Welp. Excellent. Good. Good. <laughs> Happy that everybody's participating. Um, all right. So Top Hat. One of the big questions is about Top Hat. Now Top Hat is like a student response system, kind of like the clickers, but I've been using it for years and years and years because I can say things like, please describe the gender male in one word. And then... Yeah, I saw somebody go, mm. and then 233 people proceed to, right? Same thing. And this is Soch. I want to ask interesting questions, not just A, B, C, or D, not just yes or no, you know, but like things that get us closer to things that you're passionate about and that matter and, and just a level of depth that's, that's, deep. that's deeper. So now I'm starting to get a little bit of, somebody might have had their mic on, sorry. Anyway, um, so Top Hat, you're gonna to respond to the questions. I think I might have two or three questions each time that I open it up for you to click in. If you click in and answer one of those questions from each session, then that's 100%. It's really easy. But like I said, I think there'll be some good social things that it will reveal. And then like we'll have a class session on a Monday where we'll just look at those answers because they're really interesting. In class, we'd be talking about that all the time. It's a couple questions. Yes, it costs money, okay? There is an extra credit opportunity that some of you have seen. Raise your hand physically if you've seen the extra credit link to the food drive, okay? So go check that out. I've got an extra credit food drive that's worth at least 25 points, maybe more if we crush it. My 12 year old is telling me all sorts of awesome words that I should use inappropriately because I'm old. And if we crush it, we get at least 25 points, maybe more. Um, last semester, uh, the semester before in the fall, I think we raised like 7,000 pounds. We used to collect it, take it there and have it weighed. And now last semester we did $5,000, which was 10,000 meals. My classes, which is you, are the top non-corporate donor for the Larimer County Food Bank. My thing is feeding people and we cannot do everything that we need to do in sociology this semester in a classroom inside four walls, even if we were CSU in like a million dollar classroom with speakers that I could turn up really loud before class every time and play music, maybe some Lizzo, whatever it is, that's what I usually do. Those are nice classrooms, but we've got to do sociology outside of our classroom too, okay? So there's a food drive. But Top Hat also earns you points throughout the semester, okay? So if you click in to 90% of the questions and above, and there's no right or wrong to these, this is just participation, then I think it's like a four or 5% added to your grade at the end. So if, if you click in 90% of the time above, I think it's 5%, 80% of the time above, it's 4%. Look, that keeps people straight and legitimate, meaning if you're at the end of the semester and you have an 89, you don't need to send me that email that's like, oh, you know, my life depends on this. And can you just bump or push or what? I've never heard, I don't even know what a grade bump is or a grade push or anything like that, because I'm old school. If I went in my teachers or professors, because uh, of course you couldn't, you know, barely email people when I was in school, but you certainly couldn't just text them drunk from a bar that night and say, oh, hey, uh, I didn't turn this in. So look, I want you to be as straight up as you can, participate if you can with that. And, and then, I mean, your 89 turns to a 92 or a 93 or whatever that is. So you're clicking in, the more you click in over the course of the semester, and that's laid out in the syllabus, the more points you'll get, okay? It's not mandatory, and yeah, it costs 30 bucks. Sometimes college students spend 30 bucks on a meal or in five minutes at the bar. No judgments here, no judgments whatsoever. If you have the money, fine. If you don't, and it's an actual barrier for you, I want you to participate. So I've gone into Top Hat, and I kind of muscle top hat around a little bit, I'll be honest. They're even giving me like a donation to my favorite student group on campus this semester, um, as well as 
providing a few free subscriptions. So be legit. If you really can't handle that, but you want to try and participate that way, send me an email and I'll look at how many of those I get and, and maybe I can help you out. I, I don't want money to be a barrier and you're not buying extra credit because this isn't mandatory. Okay. Um, all right. So this semester is you've raised your hand if you've heard this. This semester is unlike any semester we've ever, right? You know, I mean, come on. Like, we all know that. You all know that. Whatever. Um, but this semester, I want you to stay in touch with me. The most important thing, and I think it's the only thing that I put in caps because I hate that uh, on the syllabus, is stay in touch. The most important thing you can do is reach out if you're having a problem. We have some fantastic GTAs, some grad assistants that I think are amazing people in sociology. You know why I love sociology? Because it's a department where everyone is welcome, okay? So they're outstanding people. I want you folks to be outstanding people. But to do that, you gotta, you gotta stay in touch sometimes, okay? So be able to reach out if you have any questions about anything. Now, uh, this brings me to, um, you know, sort of, uh, most things are super positive. Here's something that I at least have to say that is very important to me. I've been doing race relations work for 25 years. I was doing race relations work in Minneapolis 20 years ago um, at Augsburg College. Uh, I've worked with Jane Elliott. She's the blue-eyed, brown-eyed study person. You probably heard a lot about Jane Elliott over the last few months. She's been doing important race work for a long time. Um, and so it is very, 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 very important to me that this classroom is a place where everyone feels welcome and everyone is safe, okay? I can't think of, you know, lower behavior in my life and more deplorable behavior than people treating people um, poorly based on race, based on the color of their skin, based on their gender. I, this, my classes, I'll tell you after every single class, be good people and do good things. And these are my students. I know that you are good people, okay? But this college has a problem with racism. And for the last several semesters, last several years, it's like somebody puts a toilet paper noose outside somebody's door. Somebody paints black face on their face and posts a thing about it. Look, all of that, I don't want that to be you. Do not make it you. Because that is low human being behavior, subhuman behavior there, and I will not tolerate it. And I don't mean that to sound heavy handed, but this college hasn't really taken the steps to fully address the systemic racism that impacts students here. It's like just another email that says, yes, we're avidly anti-racist, but I see a lot of good work going on on campus with students and faculty people who are concerned to change that. And in my classroom, that stuff just doesn't have any place. And I think that you get that with the vibe that I'm on. So I expect um, awesome things from you. If somebody should happen to lose themselves, go out of their mind or post something of that nature in this class ever, Exactly. I don't even have words for that. And I don't get heavy handed, but it's important to me that we treat each other respectfully, no matter who you are. All right. Are we on board with that? Let me see some nods and some heads and things. All right. Okay. So that's how I run things. This is my class and we are a family this semester. Like it or not, we're going to be talking about really important things. Would I have to talk about racism or anything like that if I was a calculus teacher? Maybe not, but we're going to talk about the impacts of systemic racism, systemic sexism. We're going to talk about the impacts of white supremacy, of the war on drugs. You name it. I mean, just last night in Kenosha, Wisconsin, seven bullets in the back. Come on now, okay? So this class, we're going to use stats and we're going to use social science and we're going to talk about what that means and we do have beliefs, but I want everybody to here to be on the same page and support all of your brothers and your sisters that you're going to school with here as much as you can. All right. Again, a nod of heads if you are on the same page with me. Awesome. All right. Um, so I, I just don't even know because right now I, it just seems to me like I could be repeating myself. So let me kind of scroll through these here real quick. Oh, my gosh. There's so many people in this classroom. 198. Um, Da, 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 add to group chat, something, something, some, yes, I'm down for a study group. Okay. All right. Okay. So you're just doing your own thing here. All right. So if you have any questions right now, um, you can virtually raise your hand, which I think will push you to the top of this list. And you can unmute your microphone. You can ask a question so everybody else can hear. 
um, I guess I'll open this up. You can also type a question right now um, if you have one. All right, so type a question, raise your hand. All right, go ahead and unmute your mic. Oh, Severin, hey. Severin is one of our uh, grad assistants. So Severin, what's up? Hey, uh, I just want to quickly introduce myself to everyone. Uh, I'm just here for the comments. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so just be careful. I uh, just know that when you guys are posting um, in there, you guys, everybody can see that. So if you guys want to message each other, just make sure to click on that person because I see you guys are posting each other's social media. Um, but I'm just here to, for you guys' help. So if you guys ever need to like go over an assignment or need feedback on like something you're writing, um, you guys can always go ahead and email me. I still have physical office hours right now, um, but we'll see, you know, what happens. But um, during those times, I'll be available online as well. So we can just schedule a meeting on, I've been using Teams. So if you guys have Outlook, which all of us do, I can just add you, I can just send you a meeting invite and then you guys can just hit accept and just should let you just join. If not, we can work out Zoom. I don't have a Zoom account right now, but um, so yeah, I'm just here for all you guys. Um, I've TA'd with Jason last semester, I wanna say. For the same class <laughs> so i have a i have a good grip on kind of what the assignments and what he expects out of you guys uh for these assignments so do not hesitate to reach out and i'll probably be posting comments on your guys's assignments um so read those um before you guys try to email me about why did i get this grade um so yeah cool and i am a second year master's student um some of the research I've done in the past is focused on tiny houses, documenting the tiny house movement, kind of why people are deciding to live in tiny houses. And now my thesis is gonna focus on tiny house communities and the um, eco aspects of people that live in tiny house communities. So yeah. I, I see somebody said, what about vans? I'm assuming that's down by the river. <laughs> vans are I'm not I, I'm not really looking at people that are doing van life but there I read a really good book about van life um, yeah. that another professor has in his office Patrick Mahoney he's got a really good book on that um, a little bit different some people will go go to van life for different reasons than they do for tiny houses um, book specifically that I read was talking about veterans or uh, senior senior citizens um, tend to be going to van life and basically living in campgrounds going like across the U.S. doing like odd jobs working for Amazon as well. But yeah, van life is definitely something interesting out there. Uh, I have a van. It's my V-Dub van from college, which is parked about halfway about my property and has not moved in about 20 years. But I can't sell it because it reminds me of the good old days. <laughs> Actually, my wife sewed some Star Wars curtains for it and it's gold and it's called um, C-3PO. But I'm just going to give that to my younger guy because he accidentally shot out the back window of it. So I told him it's his to fix now. <laughs> um, all right, other questions. Somebody said, um, the clicker, do we need a clicker? No, that is really what Top Hat is. And it's an online thing. So you're gonna be able to go to it. You can get probably notifications on your phone, but there's no actual clicker because Top Hat um, has, has just more functionality to it. All right, I see somebody uh, raising their hand. Go ahead and unmute yourself, anybody? Um, I was just going to ask, uh, I saw there was an announcement about the top hat like code. Has that come through yet or yeah. do we have access to that or no? Thank, thank you for reminding me. A couple things. One, do not use the free version of top hat because that like will last a certain number of days and then disappear on you. And, and either you'll have a different email associated with it or your data will be gone. Something like that. If you want to do it, commit kind of thing. Um, and then they have my class rosters and I sent them that last week. Um, so they should, they should have everything for me, uh, this morning and then I'll put an announcement on canvas and everybody will get the join code again. Um, you know, that's, that's completely up to you, but the data that we get from that, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's been really fun in classes, uh, in the past. All right. Anybody else, uh, have any questions? Um, you know, no, we're not gonna meet um, every single day. We're scheduled to have class. I will go ahead and try and give you 24 hours if we're gonna have a meeting, um, just so that you're prepared and have a heads up. Sometimes we're gonna need to meet more and sometimes we're gonna need to meet less. Wow, I'm scrolling through all your faces. Seriously, I wish I was in a classroom with y'all, but this is gonna be fantastic. 
Um, and like I promised, I am not broadcasting this from a room where my desk is with my diplomas in the background, but uh, you can trust I have a few of those in a box someplace. I don't think I ever framed any of them, but, but I could find them. All right, uh, somebody else has a question, Katie? Someone else mentioned it, so I just wanted to make it like a point to ask before I forgot, do we need an eye clicker for this class? No eye clicker, nope. Top hat would be the, the thing to use. Don't need the eye clicker. Okay. Um, okay, so which assignment do you want us to do first? The social observation is a quick one. You get in there, you observe some stuff, you write it down. I mean, if you do it, you do it on time, everybody's gonna get 10 points, but really what I'm trying to get us to do is think sociologically. Raise your hand if you watch people. If you're a people watcher, if you find like human behavior infinitely interesting, because just when you think somebody's going to do one thing, aha, they do the other. Um, you know, that's, that I think is an easy assignment. So do the social observation. Chicken People is our first film. <laughs> and you do have to go out there and find it. It might be a couple bucks. Maybe it's on Prime. Maybe somebody you know has it. Um, I would say this. Chicken People is not what you are thinking that it is going to be. Um, so check out that documentary. I'm going to try and put films up for you, mostly that have links. Some of them might not, and you might not have like access right away unless you can, you know, find a friend or maybe you get a watch party going on or something. But the stuff that I want you to see is stuff that I think is really cool and sometimes always really interesting and sometimes really weird. Um, all right. Anybody else who has a question? Severin? I have a question. Yeah. Um, are you going to be sending out like a weekly schedule of when we're going to have the class or just like the night before, just so like we know, or is it going to be more? Every week we're going to have a Zoom meeting at 11 on Monday. Uh, and, and then everything else is laid out online. So really, if you want to, you can work at whatever pace you want to work at. Um, you can watch the videos first and then we'll have some discussions about it. Or you can get in a discussion on a Monday or whenever we meet then read it. Some people are visual learners. They want to access the PowerPoints right away and make notes. I try and set up class so that, you know, everybody um, can succeed in some way. And then again, at your own pace. I wouldn't push too far ahead just because we're only going to bite off, you know, a few chapters at a time for the exams and stuff like that. Um, all right. Uh, any, who else has questions? There's a lot of us here. Go ahead. I was going to point out really quickly, I know there's people posting how the Canvas might be confusing. If you guys click on, when your eyes are on Canvas, go ahead and click on the syllabus and then scroll that, like the syllabus tab on the left side, scroll down and it'll give you like a course summary of like all the assignments in or in the order that they're due. Yep. Top hat, join code, I'll email out later. Um, McCartney, question? Yes, I was wondering uh, what your honest opinion was about schools possibly closing because of the virus. Because I know you, UNC had the issue and all a lot of big universities are closing. Sure, I, I will freely give you my opinion <laughs> about many things this semester as well as um, you know my scientific opinion. Um, but as far as this, look, here's the deal. My kids, uh, my wife and I had a bet going. Maybe we shouldn't, but, but uh, we bet. And it was how, how soon were they going to shut down Poudre School District? She said within two weeks. I said within a month. It ended up being before the semester. But that's because I was talking to my kid's teacher uh, from a couple years ago. And I said, how's it going? And she said, well, we had our all staff meeting. And I said, how was that? And she said, well, we had it in our individual classrooms because we all couldn't get together. And I said, so a staff can't even get together in the gym and you're going to slam 20 kids in every classroom. <laughs> well, that, that should work well. Um, so what I feel like is it's, I think it's obvious. I think CSU to me, I think it's, uh, we're going to go all virtual. Um, and look, I'll be honest with you. Uh, adults have not done their job for you during coronavirus. Okay. They have not taken the responsibility to do the necessary measures so that you can get back to your lives. Not my kids lives, not at 12 years old, not at 15 and not at 20. Um, and primarily masking up. Okay, and I'm going to tell everybody here, and I see a few people with masks on because maybe you're out in public, maybe you're in your room and you just like wearing a mask because actually people look a lot better with a mask over their face. I'm not so sure we're doing ourselves any favors between here and here as human beings. Anyway, um, I think that uh, they, they could likely shut it down. But see, the college is smart. They knew this, really. 
because I was told in May, you're not going to teach your class. Like you're going to be all online. And I have big classes though. You know what I'm saying? I have big classrooms. So I think we're just now finding out how to do things safe. Um, but I'm a sociologist. And what I was saying in the spring was, we're not going to get to go back in the fall because people just aren't going to get their act together. And that's, that's what I think is somebody's act together. Somebody might think that not wearing a mask is the right thing to do. And somehow that's the cause that they need to champion. But um, like I said, that's why we study human behavior, you know, and maybe we're starting to make it patriotic, kind of like World War II and you had to ration your food. I mean, we used to ask people to draft into the military, ration their food or do some pretty heavy things. Now we're asking people to put a diaper on their face for a few minutes when they're in public. Doesn't seem like a big deal to me. Um, but until we can do some of those things, man, I, I think this class is already ahead of the game because you're not going to go to class for a couple weeks and then have it all shut down. But, but that's just my opinion. Maybe not. I mean, do I think education is better in person? Yep. Do I love my students? Yep. Did I have people that would give me high fives after lectures last year? Yes. And two of those students failed my class, but they loved the lectures and they were just hanging out every day. So I'm going to miss all of that. Um, that being said, I'm going to make it cool for everybody here. And, uh, and I think I already tried to do so with the videos. I mean, my mom taught first grade for 40 years and she's like, I told her that one of my best compliments from last year was that my online lectures were the only ones that these students didn't absolutely hate. And my mom's like, that's not a very good compliment. I'm like, I teach college. That's a great compliment. You're still coming to class at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. at the end of the semester. That's a compliment. I don't even care if you're paying attention. If you want to come to class and you're excited by this, that's fantastic. So I hope that this class will be less painful than others. Oh, maybe I was in the dark before. I'm a ginger. So I burn easy. So I got to make sure I keep my, my shades down because <laughs> even when the clouds are out, I could, you know, could, could be a disaster without like 150 SPF. You never know. All right. I'll get back to serious questions now. I'm sorry. Anthea, do you have a question? Yeah. So I had a question with um, when we turn things in, my thing kind of froze. I'm really hoping that it's not freezing for you guys. But no, um, when we turn things in, is it going to be through any specific site or is that what we were talking about with Top Hat or? Um, everything's through Canvas, you oh. know, like it doesn't make any sense for us to waste paper. I mean, that's a long time ago. So everything, everything, everything is turned in online and, and you'll get reminders for it. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, for projects that I have, there are hard deadlines, but the paper is like three or five points per day. The big one, if you don't turn it in, because I'd rather you turn in something really good than worry about slamming some piece of garbage in there at the last second. No offense, but you know, like doing something really rushed at the last second, like maybe was like what I did for most of my college career that I would not at all advise students to do. Um, so yeah, yeah, um, everything's turned in online. Top Hat is a different website, but you'll, you'll kind of get the hang of that once we get there. Um, <laughs> put your mask on, foo. Um, any other questions? I'm sure there's some other questions. So anything else? Anything? Uh, yeah, go ahead. In, any of you? I was going to, I was going to ask also, um, how, like, if one of us gets sick, how is catch up going to look for that? How are, how's that going to look? Compassionate. Um, my job is to help you succeed. Like, quite honestly, like, I do not have an ax to grind. I want students to do well. I think everybody in here can manifest a great grade. And so if somebody gets sick, I'm also not the kind of person that if somebody has a real funeral and they offer to show me the thing from the funeral, like, no, gross. Like, like I believe you. It's more important that you get healthy and rest and then email me and we'll work it out. You know what I'm saying? So just stay in contact. That's the most important thing. Um, yeah, you know, um, I'm from Illinois, so I love here. This is something that sums me up in a nutshell. That would be the Chicago Bulls logo fused with Boba Fett's helmet, Star Wars, the Bulls. That sums me up a whole lot. Scotty Pippen. That's my guy right there. Uh, how many people watched the last dance? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I digress. That being said, cause I'm from Chicago. 
if you're a Packer fan, this semester is going to be kind of difficult. <laughs> nope, just kidding, but I had to get in a virtual diss on the Packers any time I possibly can. Uh, Duff Bears, that's right. Who knows? I, I don't even know if the NFL is going to have a season. The NBA looks like, uh, you know, they're doing pretty good with that business. Anyway, I don't want to waste your time. Are there any more questions that you have about anything, about me, about my family, about my approach to this whole thing? Um, Top Hat, I will release a schedule for Top Hat. Oh, go, Pat, go. No, no, what are you doing? Come on now. <laughs> anyway, um, questions. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. So um, for, the, for the first day, or sorry, for Monday, we have a meeting, and then the rest of the week, we just, like, do our assignments. And you know what? I'm just planning on right now. Um, I don't want to stress people out with feeling like you have to be here. That being said, I want people to be here sometimes. So I'm going to just start off with once a week, but I know I'm not going to be able to resist. You know what I mean? And usually uh, if we meet, I'm just going to keep it during this time because that's the time when people would have prepared to have class anyway. I also think that I set a, a thing to record this automatically. Okay. So if it works and I've recorded it automatically, you might not be able to raise your hand or type something, but you can definitely like see what was going on in the meeting. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Really how I answered uh, your question yeah. was sort of. Okay. Okay. Right now I want to see how it works. Um, the streaming for everybody, but just poke around the class and log on as much as you can and get to know the class and what I'm expecting. And then I'll announce another one. Maybe we'll do Wednesday or Friday. I'll let you know today. And then we'll get on more of a schedule, okay? But I don't need to require people to be here for every class period the whole time. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, man. Other questions? Where are my deadheads at? Right here. Although I see that some people did have Mark Shuey, like maybe and switched from another section. Mark is another social teacher with a beard that like goes way down past where his uh, camera could pick it up. And that guy drives into the parking lot jamming the Grateful Dead every single day I've ever even ever seen that guy. So look, the social department is full of diverse people that are full of love where everyone is accepted. And all of us that are in SOCH have been doing human rights issues forever. Whether you're the 80 year old person, they've been marching for people's rights. The 20 year old person, they've been marching for people's rights. I just love this department because it is a human rights, pro-diversity, very positive place to be. Um, I don't, I don't, look, I don't give a lot of endorsements. I do endorse the Instapot, not Instapot like Colorado cannabis, but the actual Instapot that you make things in that's like a slow cooker. Wow, that, you need to get one of those. I also endorse the sociology department because I absolutely love it. Um, it's great to see your faces smiling. Um, I don't know. I don't even think they sell Instapot as a thing. You probably have to grow it still. Anyway, any other questions? Uh, um, I've got a quote. Oh. Go ahead, Benjamin. Okay, um, you said that you did like race relations work in yeah. Minneapolis and you taught at Augsburg. Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of curious about that. Like I'm from Minneapolis and I was there when the precinct burned down Yeah. Um, a little while ago. So, yep. and just for context leading up to what happened with, with George Floyd, I'm kind of curious. About what do I think about Minneapolis or race relations in Minneapolis? Well, yeah, and like what specifically what you were doing there in the Twin Cities and oh. at Augsburg. Yeah, um, well, my partner's actually from Minnesota. She's from Winona. Um, so props to Minnesota, everybody, I guess. Uh, and I went to college at Luther in Decorah, Iowa. So it was really close. So um, afterwards, we were living in Minneapolis for a year. And um, I, there was a place on campus called Interrace. And it was run by a woman named, an African-American woman named Vivian Jenkins Nelson. And whew, she is an amazing uh, amazingly powerful, amazingly awesome person. We would go into police di uh, districts, departments, and school districts and do diversity consulting. And let me tell you what, when you go into a police, dis uh, police department and tell them how they are or are not doing their jobs well, it's not always received the best. Um, 
but it's important work. So yeah, for that year, I was, it was at between my master's degree and my undergraduate and I just wanted to do race relations work. So, uh, you know, I was, a, I was helping out in any way I could, but I was not the primary person at that time. I was just sort of beginning my, my journey, my undergraduate degree I made up and it was a race relations degree out of women's studies, Latino studies, African American stuff. You know what I mean? Like uh, anthropology, sociology. So issues of diversity approaches like that. That's, that's really just the thing that really interests, interests me a ton. And I'm from Illinois and where I grew up in Illinois is way different than Colorado. Um, you know, and I don't mean this in a, in a negative way, but Colorado's mighty white in ways compared to, um, Chicago where I'm from. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of diversity out here too. What I love about a college campus is that it's always a very diverse place. So I'm going to miss being on campus because I just, I just love that. That's one of the things I love about college. But yeah, Minnesota nice is, needs to be examined and has been. And, and I could go ahead and lead you to Tim Wise, T-I-M-W-I-S-E. He's a really uh, one of the people on point for the last 20 years doing race relations work. And he actually has a great lecture that we'll watch where he talks about Minnesota nice and kind of the problem with that. And, and not that Minnesota is not nice, but just our perception. And obviously we're at a time right now where I have seen an uptick in racism over the past 12 years, the likes of which I did not think that I would experience during the course of my life. Um, but which I think is important for us to meet head on and face on uh, and, and be real as real as we can be with, because it's going to be painful no matter what, because you have a system in place um, of systemic institutionalized racism that benefits people while disadvantaging others. And, and real quickly, at a rate of for accumulated wealth, 11, or excuse me, eight to one white to African American. What that means is they've had a chance to accumulate property, accumulate things that they pass on to the next generation. If dominant culture, people of European descent, were even two to one, I think the wheels would fall off but somehow we put up with eight to one all the time as if that's okay. Or young black males being killed at a rate of 21 times that of their white counterparts. So we know that that's built into the system and it's our job as sociologists to look at it, dismantle it and make a better world. That's why we do sociology. People do it to engage, not just to be like, oh, this is what the teenage pregnancy rate is, or oh, this is what, how many people are incarcerated in the war on drugs. We do it so that we can make a positive impact right? To change things for the better for people, right? So anyway, that's kind of a long answer to that, but yeah. We'll talk about Minnesota in detail. And I don't have any feelings about the Vikings one way or the other, because it's just, where I grew up, it was Bear Packer. Like, there's only two things that matter on a Sunday, whether the Bears win or the Packers lose. The Bears could lose, but as long as the Packers lose, eh, it's still an okay Sunday. All right, any other questions? Um, I have two questions. Yeah. Um, do you know if I can change my, um, zoom, like, uh, username? Cause like everyone has their names and I just have like some stupid name. Something cool. If you go a sandwich. to the three <laughs> um, dots and you can rename yourself. You just have to do it every day after that though. Okay. And then, um, for, um, on the syllabus, I know that like shows all the assignments. Does it show where, um, to turn in those assignments too? Yep, absolutely. Uh, if you just click on assignments, the assignment okay. tab on the left, you'll see like all the dates underneath it okay. and everything else. And then is there a link to that syllabus to go to Canvas or do we just have to go to Canvas? Uh, and... In announcements, there is a link directly to the syllabus. If you click on the sort of virtual syllabus link on the left, like Severin said, it'll have all the dates laid out in order from all the assignments that we have. But the detailed actual document is, is there as well under announcements okay. too. Yep. Okay, well. Everyone thinks your username is iconic. So the I, don't know the if you wanna, sandwich. I don't know if you want to switch it now, man. Oh man. <laughs> my friends just called me Deli. It was my it was my freestyle name. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, uh all right, anything else? Curling is where it's at? Is that a Minnesota reference? Nice. Curling. Oh my goodness. Um, all right. Any more questions about anything, anything whatsoever that you want to know about me on day one? Are the uh, lectures just on Canvas? Yeah, if you go to modules, 
they'll not only be PowerPoints, but then there it'll say like, it'll say lectures and PowerPoints. And then those are there. And like I said, if you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel and it gives you a ping, fine. If you don't, fine. But you could also just go there and look up Downing Sociology or whatever, but all the links and all the videos are, are there. I'll post new stuff. Like I said, I'm gonna try and, what is your tattoo? <laughs> I'll try and roam around the farm and take some videos in some interesting places. Do you like Rush? Not a big fan of Rush. Um, have you seen The Mandalorian? I have a Mandalorian tattoo from 20 years ago. Boba Fett's my guy. Somebody's got a baby Yoda? Oh, sweet. <laughs> What's your tattoo? Uh, I drew it myself. There, it's kind of like a pirate with a top hat, skull and crossbow. I don't know. I drew it with pen and ink. And then I put it on my arm. I don't know. Um, do the assignments go with the book and lectures? Yeah, they do. Yep. The content assignments follow the lectures and the chapters and stuff like that. Um, if we all get A's, can we get free organic tomatoes? Oh, free organic tomatoes. Oh, look at this. I'm going to see if I can get my camera down in there. This is just what I picked in 10 minutes today. Look at, look at the size of that box. This definitely is like about a 20 pound, 20 pound box of tomatoes. Um, we have uh, 17 75 foot rows and over 100 tomato plants. So we, I mean, we have a ton of other stuff, but we go big and, and we don't, um, you know, I picked the three professions that you're most likely to starve at. That would be teacher, farmer, musician. And so we just grow food for ourselves. Um, but that being said, I am freezing and canning and I mean, you know, tons, tons. And I think we're getting about two or three dozen eggs a day and stuff like that. So yeah. Can we see the animal next to you? All right, hold on. Just because it's day one, I'll do it. This is Boba, the Boston Terrier. She kind of looks like Batman from behind because she's got big <laughs> Batman ears or whatever, but that's Boba. I also have a Catahoula for anybody who's from the South, the Louisiana State dog, and I have a pit bull named Alma. She's called our snuggle muscle. And uh, my sons tell me she's thick. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to make sure to make you feel young and make myself look old this semester by using all sorts of popular culture terms. I honestly didn't even know that SMH meant shaking my head until two years ago. I thought it was just a sound you made like shmuh. And technically, technically, shaking my head and shmuh are pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to go with I was right on that one before I knew exactly what it was all about. Uh, any other actual questions? Anybody? There was uh, a question about how many chapters to read. If you look at the syllabus that's on there, there's a nice um, Excel sheet on there that shows you what chapters we need to read each each week and which assignments and videos you should be watching. Yep. All right. When we meet, will we get a new access code every time or will it be the same one that's posted on? Um, you know what? Does, does Zoom have the functionality to just have the code be the same every time? I don't actually know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I see somebody. Yeah, I see it, does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Check, check I announcements. Think it does. Seems, seems to me like it would be silly to have a bunch of different codes if you could just do one code. So I'll try, I'll try and do that to make it easy. Okay. Gen Z is taking over. Good. Gen Z, take over. Take over. Do something about those boomers for me, would you? They're killing yeah. me. They're killing oh, me. This man. God. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be great. Boomer. Did somebody call me Boomer? No, are you kidding? I'm Gen X, yo. Me. I'm the generation where they were like, you can't skateboard all over our stuff. And we were like, right. <laughs> you can't carry 40s around in your pocket. Whatever. No, I'm just kidding, everybody. All right. Um, that's it. I think it's just about it for today. Um, anyway, be good people and do good things. and. Gen Z thinks anybody over 30 is a boomer. Oh, shoot. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to have a great time. We're going to have a great time. Thank you for being just awesome, diverse people here at CSU. And inevitably, when somebody does something stupid this semester, I know it's not going to be you. All right? It's not going to be any of my students. I all want you to take this semester and do me a favor. Be a hero and mask up. Okay? 
it's not a mask. If you think masking up is a political thing, then you're selling yourself short. Ma we've already done a Spanish flu. We already argued about masks. We did this a hundred years ago. Okay. We are smart enough to know, and whoa, she just jumped off the couch, that all of my students, the reason you're here paying tens of thousands of dollars is because science. That's right. So all of us here at college, none of us need to worry about arguing about a mask. It not only helps other people, but it'll help you too. So all of you, when you're around, I just appreciate you for like taking the lead on the mask thing and doing what's right for the community here. Because if you want to keep going to college this semester, like in person at all, it's going to require that we're all on the same page. Okay. Um, anybody else? Anybody else anything? All right. I'm going to cut it because uh, I need to go uh, make sure that coyote's not back. Uh, probably one thing. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Last question. I was just saying bye. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, going once, going twice. All right, that's it. I'm going to leave you the same way every time, and that is be good people and do good things. Make me proud this semester, and I promise um, I'm going to teach you a whole lot, and I'm excited about this semester. Also, our GTAs are rock stars. This is our basketball team. We are – I'm not sure which Bulls team I want to be. They were so different. Anyway, we're champions, so if you need anything – reach out to your GTAs. I'm gonna re-enter all of their information to the syllabus, we'll make an announcement, and you will be working with a one GTA in particular that's gonna be grading your work all semester. Meaning, oh, I want the teacher to look at it or why are everybody different all the time? Somebody, one person is gonna be helping you develop your writing throughout the course of the semester and grading it, and then I am also here anytime you need to help. You got one page done on a paper, a paragraph, you wanna run that by me, you want to have a, a virtual meeting. Um, I mean, I only have so much time in the day, but, but you are my priority this semester. So yeah, I'm stoked. This is going to be great. People don't still stay stoked, do they? <laughs> anyway, take care, everybody. Peace, be good people, and do good things. And uh, I'm officially going to be out. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Yep, you're all welcome. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. I know Bye. a lot of people. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Dude, I'm forgetting how to get off this. How do you leave? <laughs>